the accelerometer itself is actually at the small of the person's back. Uh, and we do that because that's approximately where the person's center of mass is. And, and we do that because the center of mass is ultimately what your body is trying to control to maintain stability. The base of support is, uh, is they name these things for a reason, it's how much uh, base you have to support your body. Again, somebody just standing with their feet shoulder width apart, it's, it's the outline around their feet and the, and the space in between their feet. If the person goes from, uh, from balancing on two feet to balancing on one, then it's just the outline of, of their one foot that's on the ground. Um, you can change your base of support. You know, if I put my feet wider apart, then my base of support is wider because I have more space in between, you know, my feet. You know, if I'm, if I'm running, then I have kind of a weird diagonal base of support because, again, it's the, it's the area between my feet as I'm running. Um, so, so you can change your base of support as you move, and you do change your base of support as you move. And the center of mass kind of migrates around that base of support, and that's how we determine how stable either you are or you aren't. That's why we put the accelerometer there because we know that's the, the main thing your body is trying to control and from the movement of that center of mass uh, measured by the accelerometer we can tell how well your body is able to perform that task. The center of mass uh, again over your, uh, your base of support um, we think that people who have functional ankle instability when they're standing only on that one foot with that quote unquote bad ankle um, that their center of mass is going to vary more. The, the position of the center of mass is going to vary more. So it's not going to be centered nice and, and you know, center in the base of support. It's going to migrate around and it's going to migrate more than the average person. Now a healthy person, uh, their center of mass still moves around in that base of support, but we think it moves less. Um, somebody who has functional ankle instability, their center of mass is, again, it's going to vary more uh, in the relative position uh, in its base of support. By looking at the uh, acceleration signal, we can tell if your body is doing basically a good job of, support, of, of controlling the center of mass or, or not so great of a job. Uh, and we do that by looking at how much the acceleration signal is changing. If it's changing a lot, that tells us the person's center of mass is you know, kind of all over the place. Uh, if it's not, it tells us the person is able to maintain stability uh, better. We have the person perform single leg balance, and when they land from their drop landing, they are landing just on one leg. Uh, that is a significant challenge to the person's stability because we're, we're taking their base of support, you know, if somebody's standing on two feet, and we're reducing it by more than half um, because, again, they don't have any space in between. They just have the, literally the outline of the foot. Uh, and so by doing that, we're making it more difficult for them to maintain their balance. And again, that would be true for a healthy person, person with functional ankle instability. Um, so by making, uh, by challenging their stability more, um, you know, we're asking the central nervous system to, to work harder, basically. Uh, and so we think that any problems that would come out in somebody's stability who has functional ankle instability, we think we're more likely to see those problems if we put them in those challenging postures.